Yep. I'm going to look back fondly on that hearing. <laughs> so. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, it is four o'clock, and I'll call our meeting to order. Do roll call. Alder Decker? Here. Alder Ackley? Here. Alder Donahue? Here. Alder Feldy? Here. Alder Sorensen is present. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from January 27th? So moved. Move. Oh, second. <laughs> There's a motion by Mary Lynn, second by Dean. Any discussion on the minutes from our previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. All right. 3.1 2020 annual report for the Department of City Development and Building Inspection. Is Chad present? He is. Thank you. So um, those of you that were on the finance committee uh, saw the planning and development side of this report on Monday. Um, there's two divisions in planning, uh, city development, planning and development and building inspection, building inspection reports to uh, this committee. So uh, in the report, the first 12 pages are related to planning and development. Starting on page 13 is the building inspection uh, profile. Um, you can see on the chart that there is a uh, five-year trend chart of the revenues and in, in building inspection permits and licensing. Um, looking at the 2020, we issued about 3,645 permits for a total of about $1.1 uh, $1 million. It's a little bit lower than the previous year in 2019, although given that we were in a pandemic, I think we fared fa fairly well on revenues uh, closing out the year in 2020. Um, on the bottom of that chart, it talks about licensing. We license weights and measures, which is uh, gas pumps and um, uh, grocery store scales and stuff. So the state, contr we contract with the state and they do all the uh, on-site inspections of that and then the city bills out for those services. Um, and then the last thing in that area is contractor licensing. We have a local licensing program where we contract, where we li license local contractors to do work in the community. So you can see the total uh, revenues year over year as it relates to building permits. If we move on to the next page, it, there's a five year history of residential housing construction. Um, the uh, primary focus has been in the past of apartments and multifamily development. Um, you can see we've had one, uh, three single family homes. That's really given the fact that we don't have a lot of single family land to develop, although with the new subdivision coming on the south side and the opportunity for another 174 lots, this should help these numbers going forward on the single family uh, construction side. On page 15 of the report, it outlines the code enforcement and nuisance orders. So this is the work of the two part-time code enforcement officers in partnership with the police department. Um, we issued a total number of uh, complaints of 683 for nuisance. Nuisance would be sanitation, off-street parking, um, those types of violations, and then uh, 1,184 of housing-related uh, violations. And the map in this report kind of shows you where uh, those um, complaints have been. And then it goes into a little bit more about our continued interdepartmental focus on neighborhood issues uh, per the strategic plan and landlord training programs. And then a final picture of our department. We've had a lot of changeover in the department with retirements in the last uh, two years. And we've got a good group of people uh, working with the both divisions. So that's it in a nutshell. If there's any comments or questions, I'd be happy to address them. Any questions for Chad, uh, Elder Donahue? Uh, thanks, Chad. Um, I really uh, appreciated your report. Is there any way to get, two things, is there any way to get a readable map of the nuisance and housing code violations, number one? And number two, do you see a <clears throat> trend or an um, area of concern more than, say, one neighborhood more than another? And what would you be doing about to address that, if, if, if anything? To answer your first question, yes, we have so this. a two-part question. 
Thank you. you. To answer your first part of the question, yes, we have this map um, in a larger format that we can share with the committee so I can send it out via the email. Uh, to answer your second question, I think the uh, interdepartmental staff meeting where we uh, collaborate with the police department, public works, the mayor's office, Todd's office, um, attorney's office, we actually just had one this morning, is the piece where we identify, try to identify issues in, that are kind of congregated in certain neighborhoods and then um, strategize how the different departments are going to um, employ resources into those, depart into those neighborhoods. So we hope, our goal of that is to try to figure out those issues beforehand um, and then work collaboratively across all city departments to rectify the issues. Now there, you know, there is uh, increased crime and calls for cr uh, service in different areas that comes into play um, through what the police department is doing and then the building inspector and code enforcement officers are working very closely with particularly the beat officers but all other officers as well to address issues as they're identified. Um, Chad, um, <clears throat> is it fair to say that um, your department has received most of the state and federal COVID relief um, to disperse? Um, I, this is an unrelated question, uh, if that's all right with you, Ryan. Um, well, let's keep it toward building inspections, just so it's straight well, to the agenda. Yeah, and, and so that's my thought in terms of assistance that is available um, in sort of substandard housing kinds of relief. So we have received the, we administer the CDBG program which has received two allocations through the CARES Act. Um, so the, the first allocation uh, was geared towards the small business program as well as the some nonprofit uh, public service activities. Um, okay. the, the third round um, is geared toward, we, we're working with Lakeshore CAP to ro roll out a mortgage assistance program, which will actually be announced next week to provide mortgage assistance for uh, homeowners that had a loss of income or uh, are in a forbearance state with their mortgages. And the idea behind that is to try to curb the issue that if people did get forbearances with their mortgages as lower income people, um, to make sure that we don't end up where we did when we came out of 2007's depression and had a number of foreclosures, um, to try to help those people get current because um, as what data is showing across the nation, people got forbearances on their mortgages and they haven't planned for how they're gonna get current. Um, once those forbearances are gone or it gets added to the end of their mortgage. So we're hoping to be able to provide up to three months of uh, assistance to kind of help uh, bridge some of those gaps. Um, HUD has kind of tied our hands on some of that. We were hoping to do six months, um, but if we do more than three months, we have to make sure that the property is up to lead-based paint standards, which adds another layer of uh, complexity to it. So it hasn't been easy um, working through um, little guidance from HUD on how to spend these dollars and the ways we can and cannot spend them, but uh, we've tried to help funnel uh, funds into these neighborhoods to help uh, low to moderate income people that may have been affected by the pandemic. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chad. Any other questions for Chad regarding his report, Dean? Um, I just have one quick question. Maybe it doesn't really have to do with the report itself, but it has to do with with the issues of um, I, I've, ha I've had uh, um, some of the neighborhood officers discuss with me um, possibly um, looking at a ordinance or something. Like that, and if it, and this is possibly goes to, to, to Chuck's office too, um, a um, where where we could follow up with um, certain landlords that we have problems with, um, where we could possibly, uh, instead of going through all the steps, you go through all the steps with one house, and then boom, it goes on to the next house that they have. 
and where we would be able to be able to have a, almost like a chronic nuisance, like a chronic nuisance ordinance for certain landlords. If if, if you were if that certain landlord is giving being a chronic nuisance, you would be able to almost extend it from one property to the next, so that each time that they have another nuisance, we'd be able to extend to extend some of the uh, the timelines on that. I don't know if that's something that can be done or not. So to Alderman Decker, to answer your question, we actually talked about that in our meeting this morning. Um, the B cops oh. brought that up and they're gonna be sharing information with Marie in the city attorney's office and she's gonna have a discussion with uh, Thomas and Chuck to see if there is any flexibilities based on what other communities have tried. So um, some of it might be state law and some of it may not be feasible, but we're gonna look into that to see if we can either update our chronic nuisance ordinance or implement another one. Okay, great, great. Yeah, and it sounds like, you know, we probably need to get in more details as what they're looking for, but from your description, it sounds like something we can already do under the current nuisance statute. Okay. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Any other further questions for Chad? No. All right. That the well, report just for discussion only. I'll do 3.2 2020 annual report for the city attorney's office. Attorney Adams. Here, uh, I have a report there attached. You can see it uh, if you're if you looked at it in board docs and I can answer any questions that you might have. Any questions for attorney Adams? All right, seeing none, move along. All right, 3.3. Uh, RO number 128 2021 submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st 2021 June 30th 2022 taxi cab license application number 3452 all right so it looks like this is uh, we're, we're, we're holding a hearing for denial is Mr. Peterson president all in the council chambers He is not. The only people that are in the council chambers is Officer Stelter with the police department, myself, and Scott from WSCS. All right. Okay. Um, is so, there a motion? Oh, Chuck? Well, we, should, we, we should provide you the information at least so that you can okay. turn down okay. the lights as you choose to. I'll so turn it over to you, Chuck. Thank you. Officer Stelter, if, if, are you at, the, at, you're at the microphone? There's no camera in the council chambers. I'm there, Chuck. Okay, so I'll just ask you a few questions. Uh, you're familiar with the uh, 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 record, both criminal and traffic, of uh, applicant uh, Jamie Peterson, is that correct? That is correct. And uh, he did uh, reveal some felony uh, convictions, uh, uh, one for uh, uh, firearm by a felon, um, and there are some other, uh, there are a couple of other felony convictions as well that may be less related to the license activity, but you're aware of the uh, firearm by felon conviction from 2010, is that correct? Yes. Uh, additionally, you're aware of a felony manufactured delivery of heroin uh, as a repeater and as a party of, to the crime in 2014, uh, for which she remains on extended supervision, is that correct? That is correct. And a 2017 felony possession of narcotic drugs on prison grounds as a repeater for which she remains on probation and owes fines and fees, correct? Correct. Uh, before I move on to uh, some of the other uh, potentially related items, uh, the, the what, why is it that uh, as a department you would be concerned about uh, these uh, drug convictions for a taxi cab driver's license? Well, obviously, uh, operating a taxi would provide transportation for anybody that is still currently dealing or manufacturing drugs. Uh, through my experience in law enforcement uh, with uh, the Sheboygan Street Crimes Units, as well as a supervisor of that unit and a supervisor of the Sheboygan County Drug Unit, we have received credible intelligence before and have investigated uh, suspected drug dealers that were taxi drivers. Uh, she also, uh, she didn't reveal these, but uh, she does also have the following convictions of 2017, there to keep vehicle under control, correct? Correct. 2018 speeding, 
correct? Yes. 2019 misdemeanor possession of narcotics as a second offense and as a repeater for which she is currently on extended supervision and owes the fines and costs, correct? Correct. And she also potentially uh, relevant, uh, although relatively old and, and uh, would be a 2007 forfeiture obstructing from Ozaki County, which can be, which may be considered uh, because it remains unpaid. Is that correct? That is correct. And so based on that record of uh, violations related to activity and uh, the record of Jamie Peterson as being a uh, habitual law violator, is it the recommendation to deny this taxi cab driver's license? Yes. That's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions from council members? Make a motion to the license. I'll second. Motion by Dean, second by Barb. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of denying the application, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed, chair votes aye. The application is denied. Moving along, 3.4 RO number 135, 2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2021, June 30th, 2022. Attorney Adams. Thank you. Uh, we are recommending the following. Uh, first, we're recommending holding the taxi cab driver's license application of Stanley J. Hampton for denial. Uh, we are recommending granting the change of premises application of time and a half with the additional grant of permission for the use of city right of way, which, which is sidewalks in this case, for commercial purposes on the date of the change of premises application. Uh, it's just a one day, so they don't need to necessarily get a sidewalk cafe permit, but we do have to grant permission for that use. Um, uh, and we are recommending granting the beverage operator's license of John F. Ridenauer with a warning to conduct himself at all times within the confines of the law, and fully, including full cooperation with the police. Uh, that's based on uh, a record of violations that we felt was insufficient to deny the license, but still led to some concern from the committee. Uh, and, uh, and then granting their all remaining licenses on the RO. All right, is there a motion to accept uh, the staff's recommendations? Motion to accept staff recommendation. Second. Motion by Dean, second by Mary Lynn. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Okay, next meeting date, February 24th. Motion to adjourn. I'll make motion. the motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Barb, second by Mary Lynn. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We're adjourned at 418. Thanks, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Yep.